good evening, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between. Welcome to the broadcast episode number nine. I'm Josh, your host, as always. Tonight, Brandon's out here. Uh, Brandon had some in real life stuff to take care of, and he wasn't able to make it. So here we are, we're going to have a chat, more like I'm going to have a chat at you, rather than with Brandon, hopefully you'll at least be interested in what I have to say. What we originally had planned was a conversation about what what's indie, what constitutes an indie film, or an indie project, but... Uh, it just doesn't feel right trying to tackle that conversation by myself. So, what I've decided to do, and even though there there were quite a few people out there that were more than happy and more than willing to donate their time to take up the second chair for Brandon, uh, you know, quite frankly, I I, I couldn't I couldn't decide who, and that's that's one of my biggest. Um, foibles, I guess. I just have a hard time deciding things. So, I decided to fly solo so I could talk to you about something that is, you know, it's kind of important to me, to be perfectly honest. And that is taste, personal preference, the things you like. Because... You know, more often than not, people get ragged on for the things they like. They hear things like, oh, you like that? That's terrible. Or you like that? You're stupid. Things like that. That's not cool. No, no. Um, I'm, I'm an avid listener of Judge John Hodgman, in case you haven't heard of it. It is a podcast uh, where Judge, or where John Hodgman is an internet judge, and he settles people's basic and petty discrepancies. And a lot of the time, somebody brings somebody into his internet court and tries to get them to stop doing something, stop watching something, and. It always seems that the rule number one of the fake internet court is people are allowed to like what they like. I know we bring up um, one of the groups that we're in in Facebook a lot, and there was some interesting conversation. That wasn't it. Wasn't the main topic? Taste. But it was kind of a offshoot, a tangential conversation that some people were having that I almost jumped into. I gotta, I gotta be honest, I, I didn't. But I, I, I really felt like I wanted to say something, but I didn't know what to say because the person that I'm referencing wasn't wrong. But he, he also wasn't right. And it's weird. Let, let, let me break it down for you. The The conversation w- was centered around the Joker movie and how the original poster was flabbergasted as to why it did not win Best Adapted Screenplay. And somebody responded that essentially... The nerds, the geeks. I don't remember exactly what he did use some of those phrases. Uh, would never, like, they don't watch the movies that the Academy nominates, and, and they would always pick, you know, the superhero movies to, that, uh, that, like, they, they only want superhero movies to win. Like, we only want superhero movies to win because I will be the first to admit I dig superheroes I dig superhero movies I've been 
I, I started reading comics when I was, you know, a kid. Now, mind you, I haven't been into it in a very long time. Uh, mostly because, one well, little backstory on me, my dad used to work at a warehouse that distributed the books to grocery stores and things like that. So he was able to bring home novels and when the comic books came, they just said, hey, take as many as you want. And I had thousands and thousands of comic books, all for free. So when he left that job, you know, that kind of dried up my supply. So I kind of fell off of it because I, I could, there's no way I could possibly pay for all of the books that I was into. And again, like I said at the top of the show, I have a hard time making decisions sometimes. It, there, there is such thing as you know being paralyzed by a gluttony of choices. So, my comic book habit wavered; it, it fell off. Now, I kept track as much as I could, you know, online, but even then, it got ridiculously hard then the movies started coming out the Marvel movies the, I mean they were good they're still good I like them I like them a lot and and to hear the arguments the back and forth the binary choices people think they have that when it comes to DC and Marvel you can only like one or the other but you know objectively speaking only one of them has a consistent track record at this point. But that, 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 that's, not, that's not what this conversation is about. The, the conversation is specifically about the Joker. And how superhero fanboys only want superhero movies to be nominated for Oscars. I, I can't disagree with that ideology because I'm sure there are the diehard groups out there that only watch superhero movies, but it would be such a minute fringe that I don't, I don't really think it's worth mentioning. And, and quite frankly, it may be sort of what he said, but I don't believe that was the intent of the message. I do believe he was talking about a wider range of these these fans that are into the super, superhero movies. And basically, he tried to justify his point for for this opinion by using Batman versus Superman as an example, uh, basically implying because it was a movie that made some money uh, depending on who you ask, some say it made money, some say it lost money. But that's, that's a conversation for uh, a Hollywood accountant. I'm, I'm not the one keeping the books of Warner. But either way, saying that because people bought tickets to that movie... I believe he called it the worst studio film of all time uh, I, I wouldn't go that far but coming as a fan of comics and coming as a as a fan not not just a fan of film but I don't know what I am when it comes to film I, I mean it's it's something I do so I, I don't want to say I've lost my ability to love film because it is stronger than it's ever been. But I also... I know I'm coming at it from a different angle than a lot of people. A lot of you would would understand exactly what I'm talking about. But... Using that as an example, because something sold... Quite frankly, it was going to sell because of the names attached to the title alone. Plus, you know, the Wonder Woman. Plus, I I hate to say it, 
But, yeah, there were some people really excited about Doomsday. I'm not going to say they were wrong for for liking the addition of Doomsday. I'm just saying, in my opinion, it was too soon. But, again, I digress. The movie was going to sell tickets. And I don't think it implies anything about the fan base or its lack of ability to recognize films that aren't superhero-oriented. If anything, I I think those two names in the title, Batman and Superman, should have made a lot more money just from the name recognition alone. And I do believe that there was a lot of You know what? I was going to say crossover mainstream appeal, but, you know, I'm going to say comic books are mainstream now. It's it's not something people hide anymore. It's you're allowed to be a comic book fan. When I was a kid, it was kind of frowned upon. We didn't we didn't really. I mean, there was a stigma attached, you know. But now, now it's all good. Uh, Even though some of us back then were loud and proud about the things we liked. And I'm still loud and proud about the things I like. I I blast the Spice Girls on my radio driving down the street all the time. Why? Because I like it. Am I rude for making everybody else listen to it? Maybe. Maybe. But I like what I like, and I'm allowed to like what I like. You're allowed to like what you like. There are a lot of movies out there that that have reputations for being notoriously bad. And notoriously bad for different reasons. I mean, for instance, The Room. The Room was made in earnest. Don't let anybody try to tell you different. The room was made with drama in mind. Unfortunately, there were some decisions as we saw brought to life by the disaster artist. If if you want to use that as a historical reference, That that showed some you know, questionable decisions when it comes to the production. But it was so so bad and yet still so earnest that people started loving it. Not not for a great film, no, not by any means, but this weird dark comedy. In fact, uh, for those of you old school semi core listeners, um, saw Kevin yesterday, and we watched the the PlayStation Five reveal together. And afterwards, I showed him. There's a uh, there's a game from. Was it Media Molecule? I don't, I don't remember. But there's a game. It's on the PlayStation. It's called Dreams. And in that game, you can make games. It's, it's a game-making game, essentially. And someone <laughs> someone had uh, taken the time to put together a sequel to The Room. Where Tommy escapes from heaven to get revenge on Mark. Or Johnny escapes from heaven to get revenge on Mark. Interesting, I, I gotta say it. And honestly, if you, if I'm giving a review on it right now, I thought it, maybe it was trying too hard to be weird. I I would have uh, liked to see it take the same pro- approach the movie did, 
you know, try to make something serious and just it happens to, to be what it is. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm really straying away from the point here. But people are all allowed to like it. If somebody says The Room is my favorite movie, there's a good chance they don't mean they think it's the best made movie ever. But it, it does mean, it could very well mean, that it's the movie they most enjoy. And quite frankly, there's nothing wrong with that. These these terms get they get they get battered around a lot. Favorites, best, you know, greatest, you know, books, music, music especially. Someone will take a greatest hits album and like the they don't have this song, this song, or this song. Well, it wasn't a hit. Or they'll say this is the best of such and such, and they'll say it doesn't have this song, this song, this song. It's like, well, those songs were redundant and elementary and, and were only there to, you know, sell albums, uh, objectively speaking. They may not have been very good. So, they put together the best of. Or, or in more likely the case, you put together the best of someone because they just don't have enough songs they don't have enough hits to put together their greatest hits how many times do you see a band that's like a one hit wonder and even though they've released like 10 albums like they're a one hit wonder and then suddenly they have a best of album and you're like they didn't have a lot of hits well that's because that's not what it is but people are allowed to like stuff they're one hit wonders. Even though it's maybe to them that that band's not a one hit wonder. That band is someone they've been following for for years. Personally, I'm 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 a, a fan of the band Real Big Fish. I get told on the regular, well, Ska's dead, and they haven't been relevant since the '90s, and that was 20 years ago at this point. You know what? They still put out music, and it's still good. They were never really radio darlings back then. But I like them. I'm, I'm told all the time I, have, I, I like weird stuff. I have weird taste. Especially when it comes to movies. Southland Tales is one of my favorite movies of all time. Why? I... It's hard to put a finger on it, honestly. I mean, it has an all-star cast. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Sean William Scott, Sarah Michelle Gellar, uh, John Larroquette. And John Lovitz has a has a cameo in there. I think Sherry O'Terry does, too. Mandy Moore. It's just an interesting movie. Uh, Richard Kelly's follow-up to Donnie Darko. I remember hearing the, hearing the news that, oh, The Rock's going to be in this new movie and it's going to have this person and this person, this one is going to have time travel elements and, you know, a kind of a, an apocalyptic vibe. I liked it. I liked the idea. So I tracked it. Then what happened? I don't know. It disappeared. Saw it on a shelf one day, and I was like, wait, this this movie came out? I, I, I missed it in the theater somehow. Yeah, it came out. Did its thing, didn't, didn't, didn't do much. Critically panned. Hardly, hardly anybody's really heard of it. But when you do run into somebody else that's watched the movie and that that likes the movie, you know you suddenly made a new friend. You, you ever have those those things that you like that you had no idea that other people even knew about? 
Clerks the Animated Series. That's that's another one for me. There was another one. Uh, don't remember what it was. I was talking about it, I believe, on Tuesday. And the the idea of it was, you know, somebody said a quote from it, and I finished the quote, and it was, oh my god, I didn't think anybody else knew about that movie. I thought it was just me. It's like, no. Oh, it was Galaxy Quest. Somebody thought that Galaxy Quest was the, their their personal movie. Their, you know, that nobody else likes it. It's just them. Turns out that's not the case. Nice documentary about how popular it actually is. Check it out on, I want to say Amazon Prime. It's a good doc. I feel like Galaxy Quest. And what's not to like? It's, a, it's an awesome movie. But again, it's one of those things where sometimes people don't they don't really express their love for something because they're afraid how people will react to it. And sometimes they'll they'll throw out a line in the hopes that somebody around them will pick up on that. Kind of a litmus test. Let's see where your your fandom's at. There are so many movies that are incredibly highly rated. Is going back to that conversation from the Facebook group. Somebody, somebody else mentioned that they also, well, they said they liked superhero movies and and basically judging someone by that seems seemed a little elitist. That's the gist of what I grasped, what I took from the conversation. But I'm I'm paraphrasing like mad. To judge someone for what they like. I mean, as long as it's not, like, illegal, right? That's all that really matters is legal. As long as what you like is legal, you can like what you want. Even if it's not, you know. I don't know. But I do agree with the idea that there there are some people out there that just... Let me tell you a little story. Um, again, going back to Kevin, Semicore Studios co-founder. Uh, we met in a college class. It was a uh, lit- literature, yeah, English lit. And we had a presentation that we had to do for the class, not together, but we were told at the beginning of the year this was going to be. You know the big presentation for the class. And they, we basically had all year to work on it, and and the idea was simple. I mean, it was a very simple concept. Who is your favorite author? Who is your favorite author? Now, for me, that. It was no-brainer. Douglas Adams. Douglas Adams, the author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And... It came naturally, putting putting that project... Putting that project together came very naturally. It was supposed to be, I believe, a PowerPoint. It's been a number of years, bear with me. But... Honestly, I'd never done a PowerPoint before, so I did what I knew how to do, which was film. And I made a video that looked like a PowerPoint. And I just made sure that the timing was right. I had a script, 
I had a video that I had to present and I had to hit the points exactly because there were various times throughout the presentation where the pre presentation would sort of talk back to me, right? I would maybe get a piece of information wrong and the presentation itself would correct me. You know, I'd, I'd give the wrong year and it would say, no, it was this year. And I'd do like a little double take and say, uh, thanks? And then it would say, like, no problem. Why did I do that? Because it seemed like it seemed like something Douglas Adams would do. It seemed like his type of humor. And I, I put a lot of time and effort into that project. And, and, yeah, I got an A because it was something I was passionate about. It was something I liked. And as I keep saying, I'm allowed to like it. But... Being, being judgmental guy here for a second. I watched all of the other people do their presentations. And I gotta say, it was one of the worst classroom experiences I've ever had to sit through. Now my buddy, my partner... He, he he did a great job. Frank Miller did a great presentation on him. I think the most important thing about his presentation was the fact that it, he was shining a light on a a writer that in that setting probably wouldn't get the recognition that one would deserve. It's comic books. Comic books. Whose favorite author is, writes comic books? Right? But everyone else. Well, okay, there, there were a few standouts, but 80%. We'll go with 80% of the class. I'm not kidding, there were like four Maya Angelous, six Stephen Kings, uh, a couple of John Grishams, no Dean Koontz. I guess it was, it was past that. And all of these people that had repeat authors, I can't state matter-of-factly that they just picked popular authors and regurgitated the same information as everybody else did over and over again. Because that's what it turned into. You just heard the same report over and over and over and over. And it gets to be mind numbing I would absolutely absolutely love to know who these people's favorite authors are if they even have one because I've seen what passion looks like I've seen what happens when you care about something. And this was lacking. When you're doing a strict matter of fact, no passion, no anecdotes, just a straight up, here's information presentation. That tells me that you're not doing what you were told to do by showcasing, talking about your, your favorite author. You're, 
you're telling people about a popular author. And to bring it back to the topic at hand, that's what I feel a lot of people do when they're asked about what their favorite anything is. Who's your favorite band? Well, let's see. Who did I hear on the radio recently? What's your favorite movie? I don't know. What's the uh, what's the go-to answer? If, if I want to sound like I'm, you know, a movie guy. If I'm... What do, what do I say if I want to sound like a cinephile? And I said cinephile. So we're clear. And I think for that question, the the answer is pretty... Usually, my favorite movie is Citizen Kane. Oh. Okay, that's an interesting choice. Or, my favorite movie is The Shawshank Redemption. Oh. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's considered one of the best movies ever made, so... Yeah, pretty safe choice there. But I think if if they were pressed and, and they were they were asked to name their favorites. Not what they think is the greatest movie, but their favorite movies of all time. The answers would would be drastically different. Now, I, I went ahead and took the liberty of uh, pulling up two things. One, the AFI 100 Greatest American Movies of All Time. That's right. Let that sink in for a second. AFI. Now... We can we can go through this list real quick. Hundred movies that wants me to let me log in real quick. Well, you know what? This might take a minute. We'll just go back to the list. Okay. Citizen Kane. I've seen Citizen Kane. Anybody that's taken a film class has seen Citizen Kane. I didn't see it until film class, and some people are like, oh, I've seen this so many times. It's like, yeah, I saw it. I saw it once. I thought it was really good. Especially considering the time it was made. Do I think it's the greatest movie ever made? Eh, probably not. Would it crack my top ten of films ever made? Don't know. I should figure that out sometime. I haven't seen Casablanca. Saw The Godfather. Same goes there as it does for Citizen Kane. Take a film class, you're going to watch it. I haven't seen any other Godfather movies, to be honest. Didn't see Lawrence of Arabia. I've seen The Wizard of Oz many, many times. And if I'm not mistaken, that's a movie that's just absolute bomb to the box office. So if somebody in 1940 you know, a year after release came out and said, it's going to be the sixth, it's going to be considered the sixth greatest movie ever made. They might have just laughed hysterically. Uh, the Graduate. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Good movie. 67 Side of the Times, you know, on the waterfront. Nope, Shender's List. Ooh, I haven't seen that in forever. Singing to the Rain, It's a Wonderful Life, It's a Wonderful Life. You know, mandatory holiday watching. But the Thanksgiving holiday? Just saying. Sunset Boulevard. Have not gotten around to that yet. Bridge on the River Kwai. I don't remember that one. I watched it as a kid. Uh, Some Like It Hot. Film class movie. Uh, Star Wars. I mean, yeah. All About Eve. The African Queen. No. Psycho. Yes. Chinatown, Water Plu of the Cuckoo's Nest. I saw the second one. Not the, I saw one flu, not Chinatown. 
The Grapes of Wrath read the book. I guess that doesn't count. 2001 A Space Odyssey, Kubrick. Excellent. Excellent film. Uh, the Maltese Falcon, no. I haven't seen any Humphrey Bogart movies, to be honest. Raging Bull, no. I haven't seen that E.T. many times. Doctor Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. It, <laughs> I've seen it once. It's about time to watch it again, but instant greatness. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde, yeah. Apocalypse Now, I was. Let's see, I watched it for the first time last year. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and Love Jimmy Stewart. Uh, the Treasure of the Sierra Madre, no. Uh, Andy Hall, no. The Godfather Part Two. no. High Noon, no. To Kill a Mockingbird. Again, read the book. It Happened One Night. Midnight Cowboy, The Best Years of Our Lives. Double, double Indemnity. Dr. Zhivago, North by Northwest. One of the few Hitchcock movies I haven't seen. Um... West Side Story, I keep starting it, never sit through the whole thing. Rear Window, excellent. King Kong, 33. Uh, Birth of a Nation, no. Streetcar, I do love some Streetcar Named Desire. They're putting me through hell, Stella, Stella. Sorry, Little Simpsons there. Clockwork Orange, there's a lot of Kubrick on here. Taxi Driver, no, but it's one of those movies that I probably should have seen by now. Jaws, um, hate to say it, but again, last year was the first time I saw Jaws. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, who, um, confession time, have not seen it. Butch Cassidy, haven't seen that either. So, that's just 50 of the top 100. We'll just get down to what they say is the 100th greatest movie Yankee Doodle Dandy from uh, 1943 okay you know there's there's quite a mix here um let's see my top 100 movies would be completely different than this there, there would be very little overlap to be perfectly honest and that's okay because once again People are allowed to like what they like. I pulled that list up, but I also pulled up my Letterboxd. I don't know if you're familiar with Letterboxd, but it's, you know, website, it's an app that you log the movies that you've watched, give it a little star rating, and, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can write reviews. It's like a little social networking site for, for movie watchers, I guess. Personally, I just like to keep track of all the movies I've watched. And right now I have every movie I've watched and their rating. And I'm looking at it in order from um, highest rated to lowest. So my my five star movies are like a page and a half. Excellent movies in my opinion. I see a couple of them on uh, on here from the AFI Top 100. Not a whole lot. And these are, like, in not in any particular order. Let's see where one does in there. Blazing Saddles. The Producers, the original... Uh, Harvey, see, Jimmy Stewart. It's a mad, 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 mad world. Uh, one of the greatest movies, in my opinion, The History of the World Part 1. That Thing You Do, Basketball, I gave five stars. That's right, Basketball. A stupid movie about a fake sport. Which, by the way, has Real Big Fish as the house band. So, yeah. These ratings are not, in in my view, and I gave them, so that's what matters. These ratings that I give these films don't rate 
I guess analytically. See, I got no one to bounce bounce things off of, so uh, I'm trying to figure out the right words on my own. I mean, if if you look at this from a nuts and bolts perspective, yeah, you're gonna find a lot of flaws in my movies that I have rated perfect. But these are the movies that I rated as as the ones that I have had the most enjoyment out of. Short Circuit is very flawed. Two words, Fisher Stevens. Very flawed. But for me, it's a five-star movie because it's magical to me. Ten Things I Hate About You. I've seen that movie like 50 times. And to me, it's magical. And it's wonderfully told. That thing you do... Again, amazing movie, in my opinion. I'm not going to try and... convince you that your opinion is wrong. I'm not going to try and sell what I like to be what you like. But what I will do when it comes to my taste, my personal preferences, is tell you why I love it. And if seeing my passion for something opens your eyes a little bit to what I see then I don't see that as being a bad thing. If what I can say about something I love so much makes you think it's just a little bit better, even though it's not the purpose of why, you know, I I talk about the things I love. I could go on all day about... Let's see, falling down, falling down, it's, to me, five-star movie. I can tell you all day about how much I love it and why I love it. And maybe someone thinks I'm wrong. Well, I'm going to say right now I'm not wrong. Because I'm allowed to like what I like. You're allowed to like what you like. What you're not allowed to do is... Make me feel bad... About... What I like. I understand... You have an opinion. And that's fine. But don't try to make me feel inferior to you because what I like isn't either A, accepted by mainstream anything, or B, accepted by the cultural elite. just like somebody said that they wouldn't watch superhero movies because they're dumb and then the lowest common denominator of of movies, of film that's you're you're entitled to that opinion but what you're not entitled to do is to make people feel bad about what they like that's just not cool So whether it's superheroes or whether it's obscure Richard Kelly films, whether it's movies about uh, action, a lot of shooting, people people won't watch movies with shooting. People won't watch movies with action. People won't watch movies without subtitles. 
And they're all allowed to like whatever it is they like. It's okay. You don't need my validation by any means, but I know that there's there's someone, one person out there that, that needed to hear they're allowed to like that cheesy movie that everyone thinks is dumb. They're allowed to like their Lifetime specials and their Hallmark Christmas movies. They need to hear that it's okay. Well, I I had no intention of going <laughs> over 45 minutes, to, to be perfectly honest. But here we are. If if you if you like what I said, if you got this far, why don't you go ahead and get on your Twitter and give me a follow at Skid Comic on Letterboxd, in case you're interested. And seeing what I've reviewed, I haven't written any reviews. I should. I should start writing reviews for the movies that I've seen. I think I'm over 1,900. But if you want to check that out on Skit Comic there as well. If you want to know more about tonight's show, you can always go to thewidecast.com. You can always join us every week. Generally, it's around 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. But when Brandon told me he wasn't able to make tonight's show, I had to put together something else. Spent the first couple hours, you know, just trying to figure out if I wanted to have somebody on the show with me or not. A couple of people I had in mind, but uh, they, they didn't get back to me in time. I, I did want to bring in uh, someone to to talk about uh, Pride Month and you know some LGBTQ films and characters and things like that, and then Plan B was because of. You know, everything going on as far as out in the world. I have a friend that's pretty well versed in African American cinema and culture and things like that. So, that was plan B. That fell through. (laughs) And, honestly, again, thanks to everybody that uh, threw their, their hat in the ring and volunteer their time to sit and talk here on this show. Uh, honestly, I I wouldn't know where to go with it. Brandon and I, uh, you know, we do pretty well. We we know together what we got into this for, and it was to encourage writers, actors, directors, and all crew in between. And hopefully, some of you, even one of you, if one of you out there tonight can take my words to heart and just be proud of the things you like, I'd, I'd feel better. If you like uh, anything else that I want to say, uh, you can always go to semicorestudios.com, semicorepods.com. Follow Semicore Studios on Facebook. Heck, follow the Wadcast on Facebook, and that's where you get the latest up-to-date information. You can also follow the Wadcast at the Wadcast on Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to keep everything up-to-date, let you know when we're going live and what not. It's a really late here and you know what I guess it is that time 
So I want to thank everybody that is listening, will be listen, listening, and if you got this far, cool. <laughs> Thanks. I didn't know if I was going to be able to do this by myself, considering Brandon's the... I don't want to say he's the lead, but you know he's definitely got the most experience when it comes to being in the business. So just remember that if you are a writer, actor, or director, or any of the crew in between, that the best way to make your dreams come true is to go out there and make your dreams come true. Nothing is a better teacher than experience. So the only thing standing between you and your destiny is you. Until next time, I'm Josh telling you just to get out there and do it.